Hey everybody, today I wanna to talk about water heater expansion tanks. This is my expansion tank for my heater. And in case you're not familiar with what an expansion tank is or why you might need it, I'm going to uh, link to a video I found that really does a great job. It's only about a minute and a half long explaining why these are important and how they work. I'll put that down in the description. Super briefly though, Inside your tank is obviously a bunch of water, and as it heats up, it's got to expand because, you know, physics. And that water, once it expands, has to go somewhere because water is not compressible. Now, if you don't have an expansion tank, then it could try and go back out to the cold side or your municipal supply or wherever your water comes from in the first place, but many of those have a check valve installed, which means that it's a one-way kind of a flow. It can't flow back out uh, as it expands. And as a result, you wind up just putting extra pressure on the liner of your tank and potentially damaging some of the appliances in your home that are connected directly to the hot water. So to deal with this pressure, you probably have an expansion tank like this installed somewhere near your water heater. And the way these things work is half the tank's gonna be full of compressed air and the other half contains a bladder that is going to be hooked up to the cold side of your water heater. And as your heater heats up the water and it expands, it will be allowed to fill that bladder and push against that compressed air. And that compressed air provides an equilibrium so that the water flows into the tank but doesn't completely fill it. So it's really important that the air pressure at the top of this be maintained in the correct range. Otherwise, these tanks can fail. Well, what happens when they fail? Well, the bladder inside there can rupture, which will let water flow in and fill up the entire tank, and then it's not doing you any good, and you're just putting all that extra pressure and stress on your heating system like you were without a tank in the first place. So how can you tell when one of these things has failed? Well, for most people, the first telltale sign that you've got a problem with your expansion tank is actually leaks coming out of your temperature and pressure valve, or your T&P. Now, I did a whole video all about T&P valves. I'll link to it right up here. but. Even if you've replaced a TNP and it's brand new and working properly, it will leak if your expansion tank is malfunctioning. All right, I've yammered on enough about what these things are for and why you need one. Let me show you how to test it properly and how to replace one when it's failed. As I mentioned before, the air pressure in this tank needs to match the pressure of your water supply. And so the first thing I'm gonna do is measure the pressure of my water supply using this pressure gauge. Be sure when you measure the pressure that you do it on a hose bib or some other fixture that does not have any pressure reducing valves installed. And it might be a little hard to read here, but my pressure is reading at about 75 PSI. So that's what I'm gonna aim for in my expansion tank. Now I mentioned before that one of the telltale signs that you have a failed expansion tank is that your TNP valve is going to leak. And typically this will happen during the heat cycle of your heater. So it won't be a steady slow drip all the time. It will just happen when somebody has just finished taking a shower or when you run a load of laundry and you're just reheating all of the water in the tank. This bucket here is filled with about two weeks or so worth of slow leaks that are happening only when somebody actually uses the hot water in my home. So in order to accurately measure the pressure in this tank, the first thing we need to do is depressurize the water side of the system. So we're gonna turn off our cold water inlet that is typically located above your water heater. And then we'll open the hot side of a faucet and let it flow until the water stops. Once all of the water pressure has been relieved from the system, now we can accurately measure what the air pressure is inside of our expansion tank. And as you can see here, I've barely got even 10 PSI in this tank. So it is way too low and that's likely why things are leaking when the heater is heating the water. So if when you measure your tank you find that it's just really low like this one, the easiest remedy of course is just to repressurize it to the correct pressure. You'll want to use an air compressor to fill these if you've got one, but a bike pump can work too, though it'll take a long time. So I'll replace the plastic cap that goes on top to protect that little valve and we'll leave it for a few days or a week and come back and recheck the pressure. Now, if the pressure has not changed and there's no more leaks, then you've solved the problem. But if the pressure is down again, or if your tank continues to leak, then you need to probably go ahead and replace this expansion tank. Now, if when you go to check the pressure, you have water come out of that valve instead of just air, then the tank definitely has failed and you must replace it. All right, so getting into the replacement process, after you have depressurized the system, turn off your heat source. In my case, I'm just gonna set it to the pilot setting so that I don't have to turn off the pilot light, but it will not turn on the burner. And then since there's water up in this tank, we're going to open up the drain valve at the bottom of the heater down here 
and drain off a couple of gallons or so of the water, just so that when we do remove this tank, we don't have any water come pouring out the bottom of it and make a big mess everywhere. You definitely don't need to drain the entire tank here. All you're trying to do is make sure that the expansion tank does not have any water left in it. Once you've drained off enough water, then you want to secure the plumbing that the expansion tank is attached to with one wrench and then just unscrew the expansion tank. Once it's nice and loose, you can just spin it right off and lift it off and out of the way. Now this is the expansion tank I'm going to be using as the replacement. As you can see, it comes charged from the factory at 40 PSI. And this is a little larger tank than I originally had. There's nothing wrong with putting in a larger one, but don't put in something that's smaller. Here you can see I'm just verifying that it is 40 PSI from the factory. So before I even install it, I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that it's pressurized to the correct pressure for my system, which is again about 75 PSI, but will vary depending on where you get your water. So make sure your pressure matches your system. You may have noticed I'm using one valve to check both water and air, and I'll leave a link to a video where I describe exactly how I set that up. Then you're gonna to want to seal your threads. I like to use both Teflon tape and pipe dope to make sure that nothing's gonna leak. Then you can just screw in the new tank and tighten it down, again, supporting the extra plumbing with a secondary wrench. Then replace the plastic cover over the Schrader valve on top of your tank. And don't forget to turn on your cold water supply to the water heater again. When you do that, water should start flowing back out of the faucet and you may also get a little bit of air at the beginning. Leave that faucet flowing until all the air has been purged out of the system and the water is flowing like normal. And of course, don't forget to re-enable the heat source for your heater. Just set it back to where you like it. And lastly, I want to mention the importance of supporting the expansion tank's weight. Water weighs a little over 8 pounds a gallon, and while these tanks are not very heavy when they're empty, once they start filling up with water, they do get quite heavy. I'm using a bracket that I purchased off the shelf at my local hardware store, and in order to mount it, I'm using a piece of wood that I'm going to use kind of as a backing plate to stretch from one stud to the next in my wall. And I'm putting the backing plate in first so I can hold up the bracket to get an accurate location of where that bracket's going to need to be installed. Otherwise, it's really difficult to locate exactly where the bracket needs to be in relation to where the tank is if you try and do this before you have the tank actually on the wall. With the bracket marked, I can then take the backing plate off the wall and permanently affix the bracket to the backing plate with some uh, little nuts and bolts. Now this particular bracket didn't come with any instructions, so I just decided to use those three holes in the center. But as you can see here, when I tried to put the strap through, uh, it interfered with the mounting location there. So I just uh, moved one of those to a different hole and problem solved. This bracket is the kind that comes with some steel straps that wrap around your tank and it'll fit tanks of various sizes. And it's kind of a universal fit situation. So if your tank is near a wall, this is a great way to mount it. If your tank's in a different orientation or is not near a wall, you might have to get a little more creative though with how you mount it. One more quick tip for you. I didn't want to have the extra length of these steel straps kind of dangling where something could potentially get caught on them. So I just used a couple of zip ties to tie them down a little tighter. And one of my pet peeves about zip ties is people who install them and then just cut off the ends because it leaves a really sharp little corner there. So I always like to twist off my extra end. It doesn't leave anything sharp and still looks nice and neat. And finally, with a quick check for leaks to make sure that nothing's, well, leaking, then we're all finished. I hope you can see just how easy it is to maintain an expansion tank like this. And it's also really important that you do so because a failure in this can lead to bigger failures elsewhere in your plumbing system that are both much more difficult and much more expensive to take care of. I hope you've enjoyed this video and maybe even learned a little something from it. If you have and you'd like to let me know, you could hit me with a little thumbs up down below there. And if you found that there's something I could have done better or you've got a suggestion for how I could improve, I'd love to hear about that down in the comments as well. And if you'd like to see more content like this, of course, you can think about subscribing, but there's no pressure there, of course. And as always, thank you very much for watching. That...
membrane or that rubber bladder. So the bladder just sits there and does bladder things. I gotta pee all of a sudden.